Hey, what's up guys? Um, there's a new Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. episode airing tomorrow night, at least I think it is. Um, so I wanted to talk about last week's episode. It was called Yes Men. Um, and this is basically the episode uh, that uh, we, we see Sky recovering. Sky got the serum, um, the GH, whatever it was, um, that came out of the alien body in that storage facility that was in the mountain that collapsed. Um, so she's getting better now. Um, but um, basically they're... Um, uh, trying to deal with this character that got introduced in the last, um, in the at the end of the episode that came before it, um, Lorelai uh, from Asgard apparently. Um, <clears throat> so uh, so yeah, there's going to be some spoilers here. I'm going to talk about pretty much everything that happens in the episode. Um, a few uh, favorite lines of mine, uh, definitely the best line of the whole episode when an agent meets with Coulson and says, "How is Tahiti?" Coulson goes, it sucked. <laughs> I'm like, yeah! Because now he knows, of course, what really happened to him. He got fed this um, this alien substance, this extraterrestrial substance that made his body regenerate and heal. That's how he managed to uh, live after two days of being dead after his heart was cut in half. Uh, yeah, so um, so they're after Lorelai. Lorelai is from Asgard. She's being pursued by the Lady Sif, who, of course, is played by Jamie Alexander, um, who is in both the Thor movies and will probably be in the third one, too. Um, I was familiar with Jamie Alexander from Kyle XY, the ABC Family show. Yes, I do watch a few shows on ABC Family. She played Ali Sheedy's clone um, on that show. And um, so I'm not really fond of her that much of as, as an actress. You know, I, I think that she's... Um, yeah, I mean, she's she's fine, whatever. You know, I mean, she's got fight scenes and things like that. She's she's okay. I like the actress who played Lorelai a lot, Elena Satine. Uh, she's been in a lot more television uh, that I haven't really seen. I just looked up her bio really quick. Um, very, very lovely girl. Really, really uh, beautiful. And uh, you would expect that someone like her could influence men to do whatever she likes, even if she didn't have special powers. But she does. If she speaks to a man touches his arm, touches his shoulder, whatever, he immediately will do anything for her. So um, she uh, she gets involved with some biker guys out in the desert, but of course when S.H.I.E.L.D. comes to investigate, she corners Ward and touches his shoulder and speaks to him, and now Ward is going to do whatever uh, she wants, and that's trouble for S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, there was uh, a pretty cool scene where um, Ward uh, is... Uh, strategizes to go back to the plane after S.H.I.E.L.D. is trying to find him uh, and get Lorelai to also influence Fitz. <laughs> so when they arrive back there, um, Fitz is ready uh, to trap um, Lady Sif uh, in the, um, the little cube room. I forget what it's called uh, exactly. Uh, so she can't mess with anyone. And then, of course, um, Melinda May and Ward, they have their fight, which is pretty great because until up until this point, they've just been sparring. But since he's under Lorelai's influence... Now he's actually trying to hurt her, so she's got to fight back for real, and that's a really good fight scene. The fight scene between um, Sif and Lorelai, eh, okay. Um, and also there's a scene in which Melinda May tries out Lady Sif's double sword, and she kind of twirls it. I don't know, she's a little awkward handling it. Um, yeah, it didn't, didn't quite work for me. Um, but uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff happening in this show. Um, I always uh, tend to like Fitz uh, and Simmons' uh, dialogue uh, quite a lot. Um, when, uh, uh, um, uh, when, um, there's a, there, there's a really good scene actually between Simmons and Coulson when she keeps asking him, let me go talk, contact, um, uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. HQ about this, this medicine you found. I need to send a sample back. And he's just like, I'm ordering you not to. And she's just like, that's not a good enough reason. You know, she lets him have it for once, which is pretty cool. Um, also, um, after, uh. Uh, once, once they find out that Fitz is under Lorelai's influence, of course, Coulson punches him and knocks him out. And she looks at him going, poor thing, he's always getting knocked out. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, pretty decent episode overall. They spend like two minutes in Las Vegas. You'd think they'd spend some more time recruiting people there, but instead they go back to the plane by themselves, Ward and Lorelai, and uh, that leaves them vulnerable, unfortunately. But there's there's some good strategy there. I liked when Sif, get locked, Sif got locked in the room. Um... Yeah, that was, that was a clever bit when Coulson walks up to Fitz and pretends to also be under Lorelai's influence. Um, yeah, that was cool. Uh, now, at the end, uh, here's a, a few interesting points here. We've got Coulson saying, um, you know, uh, 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 Fury is responsible for putting this stuff in us. He's responsible for healing me, you know, and he... And, 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 he, me with the alien substance, so 
we're going to make, you know, whoever, the person that did this to us, we're going to make him pay. And I don't think he's talking about um, uh, uh, Ian, um, Ian Quinn, because uh, he's taken care of. Garrett, the agent played by uh, Bill Paxson's, uh, you know, locking him away, dealing with that. And, of course, Garrett's going to be back later on. But if they're actually talking about Fury, then I'm wondering, because you had the episode earlier this season, which had a direct... Uh, was directly influenced by what happened in Thor, the second Thor movie. So I'm wondering if what they do in the episode is going to actually influence the Captain America movie. And if it is, then they had to plan that way, 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 way in advance. Um, because, you know, Captain America, you know, shot the actual film a long time ago. Um, judging by the trailer, I gather that something bad happens to... Um, uh, Fury, but that he doesn't actually die. You see him basically uh, get hit with a car bomb, and then he's in the hospital somewhere, and uh, Scott Johansson and Chris Evans are watching, uh, hopefully, ho hoping that he pulls through. Um, but if, if uh, Coulson really wants to sort of... Because uh, he's trying to reach Fury, and Fury can't be reached anywhere. Um, so, yeah, I'm just wondering about any crossovers involving the plot of Captain America, or whether or not things that they do on the show are going to influence what happens in the movie. They'll have to, like, reverse engineer it. It's complicated. It's probably really, really complicated to do stuff like that. <sighs> anyway, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it as far as this episode goes. Oh, also, Melinda May um, has been spying on Coulson and is reporting back to Fury about his progress, <laughs> about wh what he's learning as far as the aliens and uh, everything like that. So, yeah, who knows what her agenda is. But um, I guess when she joined up... Um, with Coulson's team, she was told by Fury to report back to him on, you know, whatever Coulson was doing. Uh, and, of course, she's been keeping that to herself. She keeps a lot of stuff to herself. The both of them do. Um, <laughs> and and I like how, watching a second time, Melinda basically talks with Coulson. is like, I know you're sitting on some stuff. If you want to talk to me about anything, I'm here. And he says, I know. Thank you very much. And really, she's just going to feed that information back to Fury, I think. So, yeah. Apparently, you know, who knows how many of these characters are actually going to last in the second season. That's what's interesting to me right now. Not only who the clairvoyance is, I think it might still be Bill Paxton. We'll see. Um, but, um, but also, uh, you know, the, the people on the uh, main team. You know, you think that uh, with this being a Joss Whedon show, someone significant might get killed before the end of the season. Uh, um, you know, because that, that tends to happen on a show sometimes. Um, also, I, wanted to, I went back and watched the previous episode because I wanted to hear some of Bill Paxton's best lines again. I'm a bit of a sweet talker when I need to be. Um, <laughs> he gives uh, Ian, Trip, uh, Ian uh, Quinn all the bad news about everything that's going to happen to him. And uh, Ian Quinn's like, you said there was good news? He's like, oh yeah, right, you still have your tongue because he threatened to rip it out earlier. Um, <laughs> they said they were talking about walking into certain death in the facility and Fitz kind of goes, whoa. And Bill Paxton says, humor, son, you Brits are too serious. <laughs> and uh, he, uh, he also comments on Deathlock, of course, sounds like some wrestler from the 80s. Um, and of course, my favorite are the pretty please lines. Those are, those are fun lines. So, um, yeah. Uh, looking forward to the next episode, of course. Uh, hope you are too, if you're planning to watch. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Hope I do too. I'll see you again real soon. Later. Bye.